Hey everyone, as it stands, our schema can currently pull a event by ID and you can also create an event. I've had a few questions on YouTube and Twitter about um, getting all of the events that we create. So this is what I'm gonna do in this video is just create uh, another query type that we can add to our schema that allows us to get all of the events. So inside of the queries folder, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm gonna call this all events .js. And I'm just gonna copy the contents of this file and paste it into here to get started. And inside of here, uh, we're gonna grab the GraphQL list type from GraphQL. And then we need the event type. We also need the event model and we need the get projection helper as well for when we're calling out to the Mongo database. Um, the type of query that we have is a new GraphQL list. That's what we are going to return. There are no arguments that we'll pass in, uh, but you could at a later point add in a limit uh, or a, uh, you know, where you'd like to start from. If you want to paginate the data, this is where you would use the arguments here, but we're not going to do that in this video. I uh, just want to sort of give you a basic understanding of how you can get all of the events from your database. Uh, we don't need the root, but we'll just give that a name. We'll just use args here. Um, we'll use options and the field ASTs because that's what we need to pass to our projection helper. Now, we're not going to find by an ID, so all we need to do is just use uh, the word find, and I'm just going to pass in uh, a parentheses and some curly braces here. That just kind of tells Mongoose to get everything without any... Um, it's, a get, it's a find all sort of uh, method. Uh, there's no sort of uh, query types or anything in there that we need to do. And this is kind of all we need to do in this file to uh, query Mongo. We are going to obviously select once we found everything and just get the parts and execute the query on the promise from Mongoose that's returned. We are then just going to resolve our promise. If there's an error, we will reject and pass those errors along to GraphQL. Uh, so this is this is all we need to do for this file and inside of the index.js files we just need to um, again uh, call this, I'm just going to call this all events, it's kind of just a convention that I follow. It's, if it's just singular I just call it what it is and if it's multiple I kind of append, uh, prepend all to the beginning with it with the uppercase name. So I'm just going to call this all events and then here we will just add all events. And that's about it for, for this. Uh, one tip that, that is uh, really helpful when you are developing a schema like this and you're constantly going between the browser and your text editor is to actually install a tool called Nodemon. And you can do yarn, uh, yarn add nodemon hyphen hyphen dev and that will install uh, a process called Nodemon uh, that will allow you to run your node process and it checks for any changes and when changes are detected, it reboots your server. So it's really quite quite helpful to do that. And to get that started, all we need to run is nodemon and then type in the directory uh, of our project, which is source in this example, and that is now listening on port 5000. Let's pop over to our Chrome browser. And then if we open up the graphical interface, what we should see, uh, I'll just do this on a hard refresh. Uh, if we add, have a new query, we should see the IntelliSense here is giving us our uh, query type. And inside of here, we can use any of the different types from the event type um, from within our editor. And if we have a look at that event type, you'll see we have ID, name, and date. And those are things we can query. So if we just run that query, we'll see we get three events back. And if we just quickly um, create a, a new query, create event, pass in some data, and we'll give it a name of uh, get all my events. And we'll just grab the name back to check that that has come through. And of course it has. If we just run all events again, name, and we'll grab the ID, and we'll be able to clearly see that that has been added. So there's the latest event that we added. And this is an array of all our events, and this is where you can hook it up to uh, the Apollo clients or Relay or however you want to use it. This is kind of where you would start to sort of bridge those gaps. This has got all of our data. We can also get by uh, the ID like we uh, did in the previous uh, videos. 
we can just do event and we pass in the ID here and of course we can get back the ID and the name and that will get that specific ID and event. Cool, so that wraps this video up. Uh, hopefully this answers those questions on YouTube and Twitter that I got that I got around what about if I wanted to get all of my events, this is how you would do it. Don't forget that you would want to add pagination and some caching, um, but for a basic understanding of how you do this with GraphQL, I hope this covers it, uh, and all the best. And don't forget, happy coding, enjoy your day. Have a great one, guys.